Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. I know that since I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area, I have not shown you guys some of my favorite places to eat around here. So today we're gonna change that. I'm gonna take you guys to one of my favorite must-go places in the Bay Area. This is a place I have to go at least once a week. That's how much I love it. This place is called Gin's Korean Barbecue House. And if you've been watching this channel for a long time, there's something I always stick to. When it comes to hot pots and Korean barbecue, I only go for all you can eat. Because if you've ever been to a Korean Korean barbecue restaurant that's a la carte that's not all you can eat typically a single plate of meat like a single plate of brisket will be $30 and there's not even that much brisket on there I'll go into one of these restaurants I'll order a minimum two plates of meat I'm not full and the bill comes out to be around $60 without tip same thing with hot pot this is why whenever I go to hot pot with Korean barbecues I gotta do all you can eat but the problem is at many of the all you can eat Korean barbecue and uh, hot pot restaurants the quality is just not the same and that was always the case until I found Gin's Korean barbecue house this place has awesome quality the variety is great the service is fantastic it's all you can eat and you are going to love the price the price is going to be unbelievable to you so i'm going to share that with you at the end right now i'm starving let's go get some korean barbecue A couple of things I love right away about this place is, first of all, guess what time it's open for lunch? Not 11 a.m., not 11.30 a.m., not 12 p.m., 10 a.m. Uh, who wants Korean barbecue at 10 a.m.? This guy. Let me show you what's included in the all-you-can-eat lunch. First of all, if you've ever been to uh, Korean barbecues like in, in New York, that's the most experience I've had. You go to this buffet, right? They have everything set up there. It's, everything's frozen. Everything kind of looks like it's been frozen for a while. It's been sitting on the buffet for a while. Meats and a hot item look like they've been dried under that buffet light for hours. It's just nothing looks good. But here, they bring everything out to you fresh. I'm sure it's frozen meat as well, but it looks better. You get an assortment of banchans, and you have, of course, your garlic, your jalapeno, your uh, fermented bean sauce and each person that's eating here gets a tray like this which has a ponzu sauce um, sesame oil and salt and green tea salt so you get some rice wrapper this is what's really exciting i mean first of all it's beautiful this is like this is like my my korean barbecue bible right here and your lunch barbecue all you can eat check this out all these items here. And keep in mind, most of these items, they're all meat. And these are good meats. My favorite is premium chado, which are the brisket. They got awesome steaks here. I love the beef bulgogi. I love the Hawaiian steak. Also this one here, smoked garlic samgyeopsa. This is uh, pork belly. You can either get it smoked with garlic, or you can get it with red wine, or you can get it marinated in miso. I mean, the possibilities are endless. This is gonna be your best friend during this meal. This is literally just a book of meat and I love it. Not only do you get meat, you can get spicy rice cakes, you can get assortment of fresh vegetables, you can get a uh, spicy tofu stew, which is awesome, something I always get. So let's start off with that and order a bunch of meat. Actually, they limit you to, I think like uh, three or four meats per order, but you can always just uh, call for more once you start running low. I mean, it's an endless supply of meat, so you're gonna get your fill. One thing to keep in mind, um, this is a Korean barbecue, so things are gonna splatter. I would recommend, even though it looks kind of silly, you gotta bib up. How do I look? This is kind of funny. My spoon's a little bent, but I feel like it works uh, better now, scooping up the soup, or maybe I'm in the matrix. Oh, I'm telling you guys, when you come here, you gotta order this bowl of soup. I mean, why not? It's included in all you can eat. It tastes fantastic. The vegetables in here are crunchy and fresh. This soup's flavor, I feel a lot of Korean tofu soups are kind of bland and they're not all that spicy, but this thing, so flavorful and it packs a nice punch. Mm. Awesome, awesome. We even have a Korean person with us here at this lunch and they even said this is great tofu soup, so definitely get this. We also ordered a assortment of vegetables, spicy rice cakes, smoked garlic pork belly, the brisket, and the Hawaiian steak. And I love that they give you a pineapple with this, and you should definitely grill the pineapple. And we got the short ribs. These are not the typical galbi that you see. Um, these are the boneless ones. The galbi is unfortunately only on the dinner menu, but this thing tastes just as good, in my opinion. Also, guys, when you come here, definitely ask for the crazy sauce, which is not on the menu. And this thing is definitely insane. It's a little sweet, a lot of spicy, and goes so well when you dip your meat in here. Typically, what you should do at a Korean barbecue is uh, you put on the meats that don't have a lot of sauce, that are not marinated. You separate that with meats that are marinated. So maybe you do a batch with marinated meat, 
in a batch without the marinated meat. This way, like your, your grill is not gonna get all crusty and nasty after the marinated meat. And the first thing you should put out here are meats that are not marinated so your grill doesn't get all crusty and nasty after that first batch. So first of all, we're gonna put up our smoked pork belly. Then we'll toss them some shrimp. And we're gonna dump some brisket on here because I, I cannot wait to eat this brisket. It's like my favorite thing on the menu. Look how thinly sliced they are. You can tell this is awesome quality brisket. It's not like typically when you go to like a Korean buffet, the briskets are rolled up like little egg rolls. They're frozen, they're rolled up like little egg rolls. But these come out looking awesome. We're gonna go ahead and toss our veggies on. Grill onions, green peppers, red peppers, corn. There we go. This is gonna be awesome. And this piece of pork belly is already marinated, so I'm just gonna cover that in a little salad. And that's my little psalm right there. Oh, I already know I love you. Um, that thing, that's so delicious. Strong, smoked, garlicky flavor. I, I love garlic with my meat. That definitely has ample amounts of garlic. And the pork belly, that thing just melts. So it's a soft, melty piece of pork belly with garlic. Wow, that's awesome. I've swallowed that thing for about 30 seconds now. I can still taste the garlicky flavor. Don't kiss anybody after eating that. You're welcome. Take some grilled onions, mash that up with my pork belly. Even though it's marinated, I'm gonna dip it in my crazy sauce right here. Grab a jalapeno, wrap that in some salad. Let's see if this is crazy enough. Mm. That's absolutely beautiful. This is why I love pigs. The onion is crunchy, the pork belly is melty. This is the ultimate beautiful form of the pig. I'm gonna consider this with crispy bacon. I think I prefer this. My favorite brisket is going in. I could eat literally six, seven servings of this. And notice how there's a good portion of fat and lean meat. This is what you want when you look at brisket. Because really lean brisket is gonna come out really tough. And by looking at this, I know this is gonna come out awesome. And if you guys wanna up your brisket game, toss in, ask them for some onions and mushrooms. They didn't have mushrooms today. But toss in the onions. And what you can do, toss in some crazy sauce on top of the onions and give that a nice saute. This is what it looks like to up your brisket game. What you guys could have also done was taking your plate of uh, brisket, toss in the onions and mushrooms beforehand and the crazy sauce and let it marinate for just like 20 minutes or so. It's gonna come out awesome. All right, there you go. Your brisket is basically done. I actually like my brisket a little charred. Um, so it comes out a little crunchy. But if you don't, right now is the perfect time to try this brisket. You gotta dip this in sesame oil and salt. That's all you need for this beautiful piece of meat. I don't need any salad, just this. Um, that's absolutely perfect. I love it when there's nice chunks of fat on the brisket because that fat just becomes really melting when you put it into your mouth. If you eat really lean brisket, it's gonna be a little tough. But with the fat, it becomes like this. It's like yin and yang is perfection. Let's take a nice piece and look at this, guys. Look how thin that is. You don't want to do too much with brisket. Just dip it in a little sesame oil and salt and this thing's gonna make your day. Oh. I love a good amount of fat in the brisket. Holy cow, that's good. That thing just dissolves. Wow. Here's kind of a charred piece that I love. Oh, that's heavenly. All right, chef. A little sesame oil and salt. All you need to make that brisket one of the most lovable things you will ever have. Look how beautiful that is. My favorite item on a Korean barbecue. This place has such high quality brisket. Oh, you make me so happy. Mm. I could eat about five or six orders of those, along with everything else. Let's do something else really cool. Let's stir fry some kimchi. Also what I like to do is grill some jalapeno and garlic. Just lay that stuff on there. That roasted garlic is gonna be awesome. Look 
at the stir fry kimchi. Wow. You take some of that, add it to your brisket, dip that in a little salt and sesame oil. Look how pretty that is. Oh. Brisket game elevated once again. Kimchi is nice and crunchy, adds a little acidity to the fatty brisket. Those two guys, they belong together. Guys, check out this bite. My brisket is nice and charred. Add some kimchi to that. Some grilled jalapenos. Salt and sesame oil. This is gonna be a beautiful bite. And I wanna share it with you, if I, if I could. I mean, after they invent like, you know, a YouTube food teleporter. Also, mm, that was one of the best bites of Korean barbecue I've ever had in my life. If you never grilled kimchi before, you're missing out. If you never grilled jalapeno before, you're missing out. You put all those three things together, Oh, that's a trifecta of barbecue perfection. And I gotta go do this again. Mm. Wow, happiness does not even begin to describe how my mouth feels right now. My mouth is exuberant. Maybe it has a lot to do with me eating yogurt for like five days in a row before this, but oh my God. This is the best meal I've had in a long time. Now I'm gonna drop the short ribs in here. And the Hawaiian steak. Don't forget your pineapple. The short rib is ready. It's already marinated, so I'm gonna wrap it with some salad. Oh. I love that so much. The short rib is one of the most tender pieces of meat you can get at a Korean barbecue. My mouth is so happy right now. Oh. Every bite. The happy index in my mouth just keeps rising. There's the awesome Hawaiian steak. Look how thin that thing is. The Hawaiian steak is done. I might have overcooked it a little bit. It's my fault. I was distracted by the short rib. Well, it's actually the short rib's fault. I was gonna add a little salad to that. That Hawaiian steak, that's marinated so well. Lots of awesome citrusy flavor. Oh, can't wait to try the pineapple. If you never had grilled pineapple, you are missing out. That bite was such an amazing experience. First of all, the pineapple is piping hot. It's a little charred on the outside. And when you grill the pineapple, what's happening is you're sealing the outside. So all the juice is trapped in there. You take a bite, it's like a pineapple juice bomb exploded in your mouth. All right guys, we're nearing the end of this barbecue session. <laughs> Still got a piece of steak left. This is a piece of Inga steak. Let's just toss that onto the grill. Make sure you don't overcook this sucker. I like my steak medium. You don't want to cook the steak too much. Uh, medium, medium rare. I feel like this piece is pretty much close to perfect. Dip it in a little salt. That's all you need. Looks good. Look, is it going to taste as good as a steak from an actual steakhouse? No. But for Korean barbecue, that's a good piece of steak. Dip it in some green tea salt. The people who came with me for this lunch, they said that they won't eat any of the steak because they don't like steaks. And they said it kind of like a punishment, like, yeah, you're gonna have to eat all of it. That's the best deal I heard all day. I'll eat all of that, another order of brisket. Final meats of the day. And goes our beef bulgogi and our chicken bulgogi. I love the presentation of the meat when they actually bring it out. Again, it's not like you go to a buffet and just sitting on some nasty tray with a light above it. They all come in nice place. There's some garnishes. It just looks pretty. Finally, some beef bulgogi. Bulgogi is marinated, so it's gonna be pretty simple to eat. Put some, I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna put this on top of a rice wrapper, put a piece of garlic, put a piece of jalapeno on there. This is the best I can do with my limited folding skills. Mm. That's awesome. A great end to this barbecue experience. Once I finish bulgogi, that's it. Barbecue buffet concluded. Until next week, of course. Mm. Oh, that thing is marinated so well. Gotta add a piece of jalapeno to it. Only thing better than a bulgogi is a spicy bulgogi. All right. That's it. Wow. Usually, I finish my meal with an extra order of brisket, but uh, I had to finish a whole steak today. I had to finish all the beef bulgogi. Basically, any uh, beef we had today, I had to eat most of it because the people I'm with, they only really eat chicken and seafood, which is perfect for me. 
because I gotta beat the Beef Annihilator today. I see Beef on the grill, I wipe it out. So let's get to the damage of this whole thing. Again, 28 items on their lunch buffet. You get tofu soup, you get salad, you get a wide selection of awesome meats, and the price is only gonna cost you $15.99. Yo, yo, that's crazy. When I was eating Korean buffets in New York, um, the lunch buffet I think was around $14, $15 as well, but it was not nearly this quality, nor this variety, nor this service. And I would really recommend coming here only for lunch because the dinner uh, buffet is I think $24.99, $25. It's 37 items. And I looked at the extra items. So for dinner, you can get like a Cajun chicken, they give you beef belly, and you get the regular galbi. To me, that's really not worth an extra $10 per person. So I definitely recommend coming for lunch. I feel like that's gonna be the best food you're gonna get at the greatest value. I mean, $15.99, three days ago, I literally went to Carl's Jr.'s Burger, got a crappy burger combo that cost me $13.99. So for $2 more, I could've came here, had an awesome dining experience, and I wouldn't walk away feeling greasy and nasty and hating myself. I mean, I don't know exactly how the Korean all-you-can-eat barbecue scene is down in LA but in New York you cannot even come close to this so guys if you're ever in the San Francisco Bay Area I would definitely recommend coming to this place and checking it out oh another reason you shouldn't really come for dinner I came here once and the wait was three hours like on a regular weekday night definitely gonna be one of the most value driven quality lunch you'll ever have of course they're not paying me to say this I, I got my bill right here I'm just a regular paying customer but I really, really love this place. So hopefully you do as well. I'll put all their information in my description box. If you've been here before, let me know your experience in the comments. And if you come here because of this video, let me know how you like it. This place is definitely my ambassador of meat and I'm about to slip deeply into a meat coma. So I'll see you guys later. Hey, it's me again. We just finished filming our Korean barbecue video at Gins. And right next door, I want you guys to, to try this place out because um, this is perfect. They're right next door to each other. So you can finish your Korean barbecue experience and then go for dessert at Pop Bar. This place is awesome. Check it out. You come in here and they have all these popsicles here. Sorbets and gelatos and regular uh, popsicle ice cream bars. And they make all their ice cream over there in the back. You get to really customize your ice cream bar. Look at all the flavors they got. Mints. Uh, pineapple, strawberry, pistachio, lemon, and you get to customize it. You come over here. This is Mara. She's gonna customize my popsicle. Can I get half white chocolate, half dark chocolate? Is that weird? No. Okay. Half white, half dark. Can I get half waffle, waffle cone, half pistachio? Yeah. Nice. Check out Mara's artistry here. That's half dark chocolate right there. Look how evenly she made it. Dipping that into my waffle cone topping. This is a play-by-play -play of the popsicle dip. And then she's gonna freeze it. It's gonna get really cold. And the white chocolate is going on my strawberry gelato. Oh, look how precise she is, ladies and gentlemen. That's a uh, that's perfect amount of white chocolate. And we're gonna dip that into the pistachio topping. And you guys make all your popsicles back there? Yeah. That's awesome. That's crazy. Put some milk chocolate drizzle on top. My popsicle is customized. This is a popsicle upgrade right here. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I can do both sides. That's amazing. Look how pretty. Let me get a shot of that. Wow, look how pretty that is. Mm. Perfect thing at the end of a Korean barbecue. You know, assortment of meat, assortment of toppings. That's awesome. So if you guys go to Gans Barbecue afterwards, come here, have a popsicle. All right, seriously, I'll see you later.